Welcome back. So last time we related the peak of the sensitivity function, so the, the maximum value of the sensitivity function, to the robustness in the complex plane uh, of our closed loop system. And now that I'm looking at this, I should have probably drawn this peak. I made it look like it was a peak in the complementary sensitivity. It should really be a peak in the sensitivity that's bad. This is bad. The peak in the sensitivity function is bad. And so the, the basic idea here is that if the loop transfer function ever gets close to negative 1, ever gets close to negative 1 at any frequency in the complex plane, the system is fundamentally non-robust. That means if I have a little bit of increase in gain or decrease in gain, or a little bit of a time delay or a phase delay that rotates this a little bit, it could touch the negative 1 point and blow up. Okay, That's a cartoon. That's not exactly what's going on, but that's good enough for discussion. And so this minimum distance here, m, it turns out is uh, 1 over the maximum peak in the sensitivity. So if I have a maximum peak in the sensitivity that's 10, that means I'm only 0.1 away from negative from this instability point. That means I'm really close to instability. So the bigger the peak in the sensitivity function, the, the, min the closer the minimum distance of my transfer function, my loop transfer function, to this unstable negative 1 point in the complex plane. Okay? And we want to essentially design our system so that the sensitivity function, uh, we want it to have low gain at low frequency, but we also don't want it to ever have a big peak because that's going to mean our system is non-robust. And again, I'm just going to say this again and again and again. What, that, what non-robustness means is that if P is a little bigger or smaller than we think, it could pass through this negative one point and blow up. If our controller is a little bigger or smaller, or if there's a time delay so that the, this whole thing is rotated a little bit, then the system could blow up. So that's what non-robustness means, is that if there's something I'm not measuring or not modeling correctly, then my system could blow up. And oftentimes, people will draw this as kind of a, uh, it's a little hard to draw, but I'm going to attempt to. So oftentimes, what people will do is they'll draw it as this kind of um, cone of uncertainty around the loop transfer function that we can live with before the system goes unstable. So let me just redraw this. Let me say this is my uh, negative one point. And again, let's say I'm going to draw it a little bit closer. So maybe it's, maybe it's like that. And essentially, I have these um, this kind of, I might have some uncertainty in my plant system. So my real transfer function might actually be given by this kind of large band of uncertainty. Okay, because, you know, I, any model I make is just a model. There's some uncertainty. There's some unmodeled physics. There's some unmodeled dynamics. Maybe my constants aren't perfect. And if my model uncertainty passes through this negative one point, then there's a chance that the system, the actual system, will be unstable. And I can't live with that chance. So robust control concerns things like rocket ships going to the moon, where my model is not perfect. I don't have a perfect understanding of the physics. But I want to be able to guarantee that my system will remain stable even if I have some uncertainty. So what I want is I want to move my system as far from that negative one point as possible so I can deal with larger uncertainty before I might blow up. And to do that, I need the peak of my sensitivity function to be small. Right? The smaller the peak in my sensitivity function, the farther I am away from that non-robust, uh, that instability point, and the more model uncertainty I can live with. So things that can cause my system to blow up are model uncertainty, And that could be essentially maybe my system's a little bigger in gain or a little smaller than I think it should be. Uh, and time delays. OK, so if I think that my system, if I'm building all of this under the assumption that my system responds instantaneously um, to my control input and that my control input responds instantaneously to my measurement of epsilon, in reality, there's small time delays in every part of this system. So let's say this is my car, and I'm the controller, and I'm looking at my speedometer. There's a small time delay in how fast I can react. 
And so that time delay can cause the system to go uh, to be non-robust, to, to blow up. And so again, if I have a really, really big peak in S, even a small time delay can cause my system to go unstable. So if I have time delays, I need my system to, be, to have a small peak in S and be robust. If I have model uncertainty, I need to have a small peak in S to have my model be robust. And what's really interesting is that time delays and also uh, right half plane zeros of P give me fundamental limitations. So these give fundamental limits on how small max s can be. So this is really interesting. If I have a time delay in my system, or if this system plant here has a right half plane zero, then there's a fundamental lower limit to how low I can drive the peak in the sensitivity, which means I will have some fundamental lack of robustness when I have time delays in my system, and when I have right half plane zeros of my system. And typically, the only way that I can get around these issues, these are like hard and fast rules, that if I have time delays and right half plane zeros, I have to move my bandwidth lower. So I get less performance than what I want. I have to go to lower frequencies, so I can only track lower frequency references. I can reject lower frequency disturbances. But I have to have my sensitivity level off sooner and that'll bring my peak down closer to this fundamental limit. But if I have time delays and right half plane zeros and I try to control something really, really fast, my system's going to blow up. And this makes a lot of sense. If I've got a, a one second time delay and I'm trying to control something that's happening at 500 hertz, there's no way I'm going to be able to control something at 500 hertz if I have a one second time delay. Okay? So that's just time delays and right, right half plane zeros put fundamental limits on how high of a bandwidth you can effectively track robustly. And a right half plane zero, um, I'll probably have a, a video on this, but for those of you who, who haven't seen this before, if I have a system with a right half plane zero, which would be something like S, uh, S minus one over, let's say, S squared, that's a transfer function with a right half plane zero, meaning a zero of the numerator that's in the right half plane. If I do a step response of this system with a right half plane zero, it actually goes in the wrong direction before then picking up and going in the right direction. Now, interestingly, we saw this for the inverted pendulum on a cart problem. When we wanted it to go to one direction, it actually went in the wrong direction before it went in the right direction. So if you ever see this behavior in your system where you step it and it goes in the wrong direction before it goes in the right direction, that should tell you that there's a red flag. You have a right half plane zero, and you will have a fundamental limit on how high your bandwidth can be before you lose robustness. And what that means, if you think about it, if this thing has to go in the wrong direction before going in the right direction, it's almost like this acts like a time delay. This, this really acts almost very similarly to a time delay. And again, if I have a one second delay before I can go in the right direction, there's no way I can track something at 500 hertz. Okay, so time delays and right half plane zeros put fundamental limitations on how high frequency of a disturbance or reference you can reject or track. And it also puts a fundamental limit on how far you can drive this peak of the sensitivity down. High peaks in sensitivity are bad. They make you fundamentally non-robust. Okay, all right, thank you.